God is still a good God and we thank him that we are still alive and we can be here with you in our beautiful country of Guyana on the coastland in the riverine area wherever in the Caribbean for the field. We bless God that you take time out to be with us week after week and we pray this time that you will gather your family and a friend and as we share from the word of God, we trust that your life will be blessed, your family will be blessed, and whatever you possess will be blessed. We pray that you stay tuned, and God bless you. Last week, I'm sure that you were impacted by the different stories shared by different members of the panel as to how the appearance would have contributed to the development and the well-being, and also how they themselves contribute to the development and well-being of their own children. And so this evening we want to continue looking at how we can actually teach and train members of the family to do what God, uh, what God expects of them. And we're going to explore several scriptures from Proverbs which talks about um, not removing the, the ancient landmarks or boundaries you know, if we apply that today, God has set certain standards for us to live by and to operate by. And when we tamper with those standards, you know, the whole family could be thrown in, in, into disarray, you know. Um, standards that will maintain um, such an individual from not living in sin. Um, standards of justice, to be just, to be, to be merciful. And so, when we tamper with these, we interfere with, with the family and what the family ought to do in terms of its own development. So this evening we want to continue looking at how we can actually help to train and teach our children in the context of our family, gentlemen. It is amazing how the family is directly connected to national public life. It's amazing how you and I, as parents, um, may not really fully understand who we have in our homes as we train them. But they will be tested in time to come. So we have a duty to train as deep as we possibly could. While we have a duty to transmit values and morality to them, and not just transmit it by, in terms of educating them. We have this duty also to model it. These little babies that we are rocking in our arms, little toddlers running between our, 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 our legs and generally bringing joy, jumping back and forth, they will be the leaders of the nation tomorrow, of industry tomorrow, of the church. Now, if we demonstrate to them and teach them to have their own way at all times, they will frustrate their generation when they become leaders. We have a duty to model and to teach yeah. our children and show them you, it is not practical that you'll have your way all of the time. Life is of such that there's a great demand for us to learn how to negotiate, learn how to step back, and for very many reasons. You know, in, if I can tell you a secret, this is a big secret, you know. Okay. One of the reasons why many families, their, their, their marriage, well, dissolve or implodes, or people say it explodes. You know, one of the reasons why that happens. Somebody wants to prove that he or she is right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they lose sight of the big picture, focusing only on their narrow uh, position. I, I am right. And in order to prove that they're right, the ship is going on. Mm -hmm. And then they prove the point, they're right. Mm -hmm. And the ship is not a submarine, so it sinks. The marriage breaks down your tree. You know, in our homes, we have this duty to train our children to know when to back off and to say, you know something, 
I'm going to listen to that. As a matter of fact, we have to teach our children not just to speak, but to listen. Yes. Yes. And, and it is critical. The people who we see as leaders around us, in every sphere of, of, of human endeavor, they were once children. And somehow, I, I think in their upbringing, they were not released to this whole question of give and take. If we are going to make progress, we can't be right all at the time. <laughs> so I'm pleading with us as parents, teach your, have this conversation with your children, teach them. Because you'll never know who your son might become, what your daughter might become. So they have to have uh, an opportunity and we must put structure in their lives. While we have, we, we remain firm to the issues of values and morality. We have to value what that other man says, and, and, and we have to learn how to work together for the common good of all. Indeed, that is so critical in families. I am so thankful for those conversations, for those negotiations, especially with my mother. I recall I was 20 years old then, and my father had already passed. So, you know, I thought, you know, you're a 20-year-old, you can start doing things, you know, on your own. And I had a very good friend who still lives in French Guiana and uh, invited me to go over there. I was all excited. And I said, well, okay, I'm going to go to my mother with this beautiful idea of traveling to French Guiana. Boy and boy, she started to zero in on those what if questions that I had not uh, considered before. And I was very upset. But I'm thankful that, you know, parents who just, who just dare not giving children their own way, but ensuring that you not just uh, teach the values, but you model it. And she started laying down the principles, reminding me that in this house, X, Y, Z, you know, so I am so thankful for those parents who are strong. And um, I really want to thank God for my mother, who stood up at that time, years after I went. And um, I had a good time. And as I was there, I, I thought of that time that I was rejected, you know. So thank God for those parents who were firm and uh, who continue to model the values that are so critical for their children. Parenting is no easy work. It's an awesome responsibility. Uh, responsibility. As a matter of fact, it is a full-time job. Mm -hmm. As parents, we must remember that children belong to God. They are, they are God's greatest gifts to parents as recorded in Psalms 127, and verse 3. That is why it is important that we live and we model a good life before them as recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Children are a reflection of what they see in their home. Now if they live with criticism, they learn to condemn and judge. If they live with hostility, they learn to be angry and fight. If they live with ridicule, they learn to be shy and withdrawn. If they live with encouragement, they learn confidence. If they live with fairness, they learn justice. And so I say to all parents, work with your children so that they will be what God wants them to be. You know, I would like to <clears throat> repeat that it takes a village to, to raise a child. And um, and I would also like to take the opportunity, while I strongly believe that a child needs both father and mother, I, I have seen mothers who, I don't know how they have done it, but through the grace of God, I don't ask me how, I don't know how, but they have invested and have raised strong children. And so <clears throat> there might be mothers out there who struggling I don't send you, I'm not sending you out to go make other children. 
but because of the children you have, you have invested in them and ensuring that they don't go astray. I want to say, shout out to you. I was but thinking also, about that same statement, it takes a village to raise a child, when you raise that point. I, um, I can recall I was driving home sometime and I heard uh, the, the testimony of uh, a, public, a public figure. Um, he said that it was very common in his class that he would either uh, get last or second to last <laughs> all the time in his class. And a gentleman spoke to him. I mean, he has it. He had experience and all of that. But he said he came to the light of day when this gentleman, and the name suggests that is a gentleman from a from another race, if it if it um, if it's norm. Um, but this speaker of the National Assembly, Rafael Trotman, said he was nothing. He was not making it. And he was spoken to by this gentleman. And from then, his life started to unfold and he started to take things more seriously. I am saying that uh, what we are seeing here as the norm and the kind of behavior that we will see on the street, we just celebrated Mashamani and we had some, some uh, unbecoming behavior in some of the floats or some of the... Uh, the the tramping or whatever you call it. But um, if persons can <clears throat> take a hold and find time to instruct the, young, the younger generation, we will take this nation someplace because these are the valued people of God. These are the, the children of God, the future. And we just cannot allow them to deteriorate. We never know who is the next speaker of the National Assembly. Yeah. So let us all make a point to, to train and to teach and to encourage and to help. There's a gentleman who was apparently raised in Pleasance and he recently passed. He distinguished himself by earning um, a PhD, among other things, working with one of the finest um, uh, international organizations. I was not at this um, homegoing um, service. But a friend was telling me um, about some of the things that were said about him. It was said that when he passed for Queen's College back in the day, he was so he, he missed the scholarship by one mark. And um, but that didn't prevent him coming from extremely humble beginnings. The village rallied around different ones um, in the village, um, pooled the resources together. And they they contributed to the family, and 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 I understand that that gentleman, even though he reached the very top of his game, never forgot um, his village. And um, well, according to the report that I received, I wasn't there personally. Um, he continued to invest in the lives of young men and women even in the 21st century, even when he was sick, he continued to um, give bursaries and all those kinds of things. No, I heard Pastor saying, quote, um, made a, a reference about the kinds of things we can do and in a family. And he not only put the spotlight on those things that you and I can do, but he also presented very fast the outcome. I would like to slow it down and just um, share with us again. Whoever, this is not rocket science. It is parenting must, is fueled by love. It should be propelled, yeah, motivated by love. The momentum comes um, from, it's not, you mustn't feel this weight that you know you have these children, you know, and they weigh you down. Uh, you should love your children. And I think once you love your children, that is 90% um, of the work done. And the others just to nurture them and to encourage them. Mm -hmm. If, however, you raise, if the children are raised in an environment where there's criticism, those children learn 
to condemn and to judge others. This is a, a simple reference here. And we're asking you to, to examine it. If you raise your children in an environment of hostility, you know, we had a little boy coming to Sunday school. As soon as he got to Sunday school, he would fall asleep. And the teacher one day went to visit their home. And then he discovered why the child was asleep. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning in Sunday school was the most peaceful mm -hmm. time in that child's life. Mm -hmm. The teacher found this out when he went to visit. It was like <coughs> war break in the home. When the teacher went to visit, everybody was against everybody else and they were arguing and they were remonstrating with each other. So when that little boy came to Sunday school and the quiet in the church, he just set, settled himself in and was fast asleep. So what the teacher did, he allowed him to sleep. And at the end, he would take him aside and teach him because there was hostility in the home. If we teach, um, we raise him in an environment of hostility, there will be anger and, and fight. If we raise them in an environment of ridicule, mm -hmm. they will be shy and withdrawn. Mm -hmm. You know, ridicule, you never focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. You always see the negative and you say to that child, and that child lives in a withdrawn kind of um, um, manner. If they live, you raise them in an environment of shame, they learn how to feel guilty because this thing is over them. I notice companies now on different ones, naming and shaming. It's, 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 that's what they call their doing. Mm -hmm. If you f do something, um, to the organization, they put your mm -hmm. photograph in the newspaper's yeah. name. There must be better ways. Yes. Why are we doing that? Yeah. We need to be able to talk to each other. What's, what's, what's mm -hmm. happened with that? Mm -hmm. We can't talk anymore. We can't negotiate. We can't speak anymore. People won't talk anymore. If they, we raise them in an environment of encouragement, they learn confidence. It's a fantastic thing yeah. to stop a child and say, put your shirt in your pants. Yeah. You know? And uh, listen, today you go into that interview and you know, you speak to children. Children play, role play at, at home. Mm -hmm. Sit and listen to the role play. Mm -hmm. You might be able to encourage that child. And when that child leaves that environment, yes, you might have just have three steps going into your house. But because that child is encouraged, that child is confident, that child walks into the situation. And when people say no, they have to say yes to them. If you raise them with fairness, Fairness, where you, you know, in a household is like a, a miniature um, nation where the parents, they're like the judges and the president, they, they rule. If you raise them in fairness, where you say you listen to mothers, you adjudicate, no, that is not right. You don't have a right. When I was growing up, Sunday morning, that's the first time for the week we had meat. Mm -hmm. Sunday meat, not morning, Sunday mm -hmm. lunch. It, that's the meat day, you know? Beef I'm talking about, chicken. Mommy used to land that in our plate. And then you used to say grace before meals. Mm -hmm. I always close my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, my meat was gone. <laughs> These brothers of mine who were praying with me, I don't know how God loved meat like that. My meat used to disappear until I learned how to watch and pray. <laughs> you know? Then I discovered it wasn't God, it was these people around me. So we have to teach them fairness. When you teach them fairness, raise them in an environment of fairness. You know, ch you, they, these children become interested in justice. And so, how, this is not the work of the, of the social workers and, and the school system. Mm -hmm. Parents, you and I have this duty. Parents mm -hmm. got to set the environment. This is what I'm. This is what I'm getting from what you, what you're saying. Parents got this responsibility of setting the environment. We can determine the outcome just by setting the environment, and we really have to get back um, to these days. It would seem as though you know, uh, parents of old didn't just used to allow their children to just grow up. They were determined to put structure and, and character within them so that they could grow. They may not have had much 
And we really need to get back to this. And I remember in the words of, of, of a professor, Ken Dans, we will refer to him many times, you know, you don't get what you expect. You get what you inspect. And I remember years ago, very many years ago, well, not too very many, <laughs> but there was this particular game that I loved from, we used to play it in school, Battleship. This young man used to bring this, this little video game and we used to just play it. And I determined one of these days when I can borrow this game. But I remember my parents, they, they used to check. They never used to check every day, but they would check, um, you know, every now and again. And I decided, you know, let me this game today. I can carry it home and I can just play. And this day, when I decided I will carry this game home, they asked to see my bag. What do you have there? Let me see you. Let me see what you have there. And, and, and I, I had to give it up to them. I said, what are you doing with this? And I heard all the questions. You know what they were doing? They were saying, don't develop and cultivate this attitude of boring, 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 you know. And so because they were able to really inspect, mm -hmm. they were able to check, and they were able to see. Parents, are we checking? We need to check. We need to lay certain things on. They just can't grow up. They need to grow up with stuff in them. In addition to what you just said, Francis, mm -hmm. is the reality of you know the challenges that some parents face because of the makeup of the home. But it does not um, mean that you give up your responsibilities to your children and to your families. I recall as a youngster, my mom had a guest over, and she asked me to bring a piece of cutlery from the kitchen. And I brought it, and I gave it to her in the wrong way. And she sent me back to the kitchen to wash it. And I returned, and I gave it to her the same way that I did before. She sent me back to the kitchen to wash it. And this went on for several times, and I was becoming aggravated, and I started to cry. But finally, I got it right. And I gave it to her by the handle instead of by the blade. And then she took it from me. That was a lesson being taught to me. She did not beat me, she did not scold me, she just had me do it over and over until I got it right. Sometimes that is the, the, the necessary tool to help that child or to help those children to come to that place of becoming what they need to become. You know, children model exactly what they see and, and, uh, and what they hear. And I, I like that story because it takes us right back to, um, to Deuteronomy with the consistency, right? Yeah. I think you said you had to go several times until you get it right. But bind them on your wrist, on your forehead, mm -hmm. on the doorpost. Talk to them when they when you lie down, when you walk, and so on. And so it is important that the environment is set so that our children can learn. Because when the environment is conducive to learning, and I tell you the truth, it is amazing um, the amount of things a child will learn. Um, sometimes people would like to say, man, this child is only two years old, three mm -hmm. years old. But let me tell you something, that is the period, and the psychologist will tell you that that is the period when they apparently they tend to suck up all the information that is possible. And so it is so important that during that time, we, we, we heard things coming out like justice and, and love and, and, and caring and sharing as we do that, as we set the, those kind of values in our environment. Our children will actually take in those values and able to, to, to show for them at a later stage in their lives. You know, I heard some things from my dad. My dad, every morning when he gets up to start to clean in the yard, he would call me, say, Raffle Cup. We are men together. That is the broom and let us clean the yard. So he took me from sweeping to cleaning the fowl coop. And he taught me this thing that we are men together. That statement has never left my mind, so I cannot veer off from this side or think that I'm anything else but a man. Whatever you say to your children, it leaves thing in their minds. So I heard that we are men together. I've learned to become a man, and I'm teaching my sons as a man, you have to be responsible and you need to take it because you have been given responsibility. So as men, we need to step up to the plate and do what we're called to do. Be responsible. 
You know, one of the things I recognize here is that as parents, we can't get tired. <laughs> <laughs> we have to continually teach and train and develop our children. It is our responsibility. And you know, we are blessed to be parents. God has given us these children as gifts. And so we have a responsibility and a duty. And we must be determined to see our children become what God wants them to become. I grew up in a home where my parents didn't know much about God, but there were certain values that they, they, they stood for. You know, they taught those principles to me. I knew I had to clean the fall pen, I knew I had to sweep, I knew the things that I had to do every day. I couldn't miss it because they checked. Whenever you finished doing the work, they went back and they checked to see if it was done properly. If it wasn't done, you start all over again. Mm -hmm. And so these are the things that they kept doing and I have learned from those things. And you know, to be a parent, I came to the church and I learned how to to live, uh, train my children how to teach them and so we have to continually make a, a decision to teach our children continually. The wise man in Proverbs clearly established a position we should not remove the ancient landmark, the ancient boundary. Parents, you are aware some of you or most of you are aware of these landmarks. Don't reposition them in terms of values and morality. When I became a man, somewhere around 17, 18, I was working. My father decided that he was going to initiate me into manhood. And so he invited me to let's have a drink. Yes, alcohol. I was, um, by that time, I, I had already started embracing the principles of the gospel. And um, I told my dad that I would not, I, uh, I would not be a party to that activity. I had the strength to say that. How are you initiating your sons, your daughters, the children who come under your sphere of influence? How are you leading them? How are you impacting them? How are you influencing them? Your work is a tremendous one. Your, your job is a tremendous one. We pray that God would richly bless you and help you to impact this next generation so they will serve their family, they will serve their God, and they will serve their, na their nation, they will serve their companies well. Be blessed with you next week. We thank you for being part of Choices. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly for any of our regular weekly services. I am Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.